The rafters and the walls at Gambo Pavilion are adorned with countless accolades and milestones. Conference championships, national titles, Hall of Fame inductees, the names and the numbers, they seem to go on forever. Some of the greatest to ever play the game have called stores home. And today we pour through UConn's prestigious record books to name the 10 greatest players in the history of the program. It's the best of the best. UConn women's top 10, and it begins right now. And we welcome you the best of the best UConn women's top 10 presented by People's United Bank. Gary Apple joined by both UConn's and SNY's. Kara Walters to my left and Megan Como to my right. Doug Feinberg of the Associated Press joining us as well. And when you've achieved all that Gino Oriema and the UConn program have, it becomes virtually impossible to reach a consensus as to who should rank amongst the university's most decorated contributors. But we're going to do that here, counting down from 10 to 1 here over the course of the the next hour but how daunting a task is this uh, I'll begin with you Meg well you know it's a it's a nearly impossible task um, and as someone who as I, I do feel like I'm, I'm getting really old <laughs> having played with some of these guys on this list having coached some of them and having broadcasted the rest of them uh, I feel like I've been around a long time but you know it truly is an embarrassment of riches and I don't know how you just pick 10 but we're going to give it a whirl. We're going to do it. A lot of us have voted on this list. What, what, what's your take on this, Kara? I think it's it's like picking your favorite child, Gary. <laughs> I mean, this is impossible. I was up for doing, like, more superlatives, you know? <laughs> most athletic, help the team the most. That might be a little easier, but... This, this is this is the toughest show I've ever had to do. The question is, are you going to show up on this list? You did not vote here. You had to recuse yourself. Yes. We shall find out here. Doug, you've covered the women's game for many years. Now, when you look at uh, the task... At, uh, at hand here. What's your take on it? I mean, you're right. Embarrassment of riches is definitely the right words for it because there's so many great players that were on this list and not on this list that it's tough to pick ten, the 10 best of anything. So we're going to do that, and then we'll uh, debate the picks and where they stack up. Before we delve into the top 10, let's get a look right now at the panelists who were involved in the voting process. Here they are. And so let's get it going here. And we begin on our list with number 10. Number 10, Mariah Jefferson, four years, four national championships, a two-time Nancy Lieberman Award winner as the nation's top point guard. Jefferson left UConn as the all-time assist leader, the first Husky to be recruited from Texas. She is only the second ever to record back-to-back -back seasons with at least 100 steals. A two-time AP All-American, Jefferson garnered NCAA All-Tournament team honors in 2015 and 2016. And that means the world to me. Um, as everybody knows, UConn is an amazing program, and to be acknowledged as one of the 10 best players to have gone through that school, uh, it means the world to me. Uh, I'm really excited. You must have nine other guys that are really, really good to have her at number 10. Mariah came to Connecticut and became incredibly confident and self-assured in her, in her game. So there it is at number 10. It's Mariah Jefferson. This was, uh, I don't want to say controversial, but certainly well debated amongst us in our meetings. I'll begin with you on this, Kara, and I'm not sure you agree with uh, Mariah at this place on the list or on the list at all. Like, how do I say this? I'm going to get say letters. It. No, and you've got to say people, it. Like, you know, sending me death threats. Uh, it, I mean, I just disagree a little bit. I mean, she's on the cusp for me. Um, personally, you could have put anybody in that 10th spot, really. But for me, I don't know. I think I put maybe Slip Svetlana Abrasimova on that list before I put Mariah Jefferson. Yes, she won four national championships, so that might put her over the top for that. She does lead in assists, Mariah does. So there's so many reasons, but she played more games, m m more than some of the people on that assist list. And look who she played with to win a national championship. So not that she does doesn't deserve it. I would just debate the fact that maybe potentially she doesn't. I didn't have her on the list only because uh, not that she's not worthy of it. Again, you know, as, as Doug was saying before, you know, really hard to pick uh, just 10. But the reason her freshman year, her numbers were so bar far below what her other three seasons were. That's why I didn't pick her just because there were so many other players who I felt added more to their team because in my mind, um, 
my criteria was what did they mean to their team and how valuable were they to their particular team and what did they have to do for them and Mariah had a very strong supporting cast. I, I agree with you 100%. I think actually all three of us didn't have her in the top 10 in our group but I think Gino now compares guards to her like Crystal Dangerfield last year when she was a freshman. Hey she's where Mariah was at this point so she's being used as a standard now in four titles four years no matter who you're playing with that's still really really impressive. I'm going to say I, I did have her on my list and listen I always think the point guard is sort of an extension of your head coach mm. and she was an extension of Gino on the floor. She could take over a game. I know she had a mm -hmm. terrific supporting cast but for that reason alone the four national championships the leader all time in assists at Connecticut mm -hmm. I did have her on my list and so we're just getting going here on the best of the best UConn women's top 10. We know where Mariah Jefferson slots in but what about her teammate at Connecticut Brianna Stewart where is she going to fall in the top 10 that's so much more when we come back in just a moment. Best of the best. UConn Women's Top 10 is presented by People's United Bank. See what know-how can do for you. Number 9. Carrie Bascom. Considered to be Gino Oriema's first big-time recruit, Bascom led the Huskies to their inaugural Big East regular season title, Big East conference title, and final four appearance. The first All-American in the history of the UConn program, Bascom was a three-time Big East player of the year and left UConn as the school's all-time leading scorer. It's an incredible honor um, because, you know, being the first All-American in the program, it's nice to kind of reflect back and say, hey, people appreciated what I did to help try to build the program into what it is today. Um, so honored is, um, you know, the least of what I could say about that. You know, people talk about all the All-Americans that we have on our team. Um, and back then, we didn't have any. All we had was a team of guys that nobody knew about. And the only people that knew we had probably one of the top 10 players in the country was us and some people in our league. I'm not sure we've had another player in our program that's done more for their team than Kerry did for our team. That is very high praise right there from the Hall of Famer Gino Oriyama. You played three years with Kerry mm -hmm. Bascom. What do you think of her at number nine on this list? I would put her much higher. Quite frankly, I, I thought, again, playing with her for three years and, you know, Gino had those very nice things to say. You should have heard him back then <laughs> while she was here. Not so kind. Uh, but Carrie was, she was unbelievable. She made every big shot. She brought the ball up the floor. She rebounded. She defended. She did everything. But to me, the thing that I'll always remember, every big shot that, she, that we needed, she made. She was legit. And the first three-time All-American. Yeah, I mean, she was an unbelievable player. She she was the foundation for that program. That without her, they probably not would have had the run right away they had after she mm -hmm. was gone. I feel bad there was no APL Americans when she was back playing when you guys were playing. So she never had a chance to be an APL American, but she definitely would have been at least one or two time All American for us had we had a team back then. She is sixth on the all time scoring list at Connecticut. Do we have a tendency here, Kara, to mm -hmm. when we go back into the history books, get a little too current and forget about? and not give credit to those who came a little bit further back? No doubt. You forget. It's been so long ago. And then y y it will happen later and later when we see as this list comes off, if we did this list, you know, 10 years from now, people have short-term memory. But what Carrie Bascom did, I think, with your help, Meg, right? That's ah, what she became. So. <laughs> <laughs> and she laid, like Doug said, laid the foundation. And what that did was help get recruits. So mm -hmm. it, it got, you know, Rebecca there. It got attention. They went to the first Final Four. So I think that helped kind of bring players in. Mm -hmm. So she was that foundation player. But as time goes on and we get old, people forget. So it's nice that Gino had those things to say. And clearly, Megan played with her and knows the importance of her. And I put her higher on the list. Of Are her. we getting old? I mean, did you look right at me when you said that <laughs> no. was I'm very concerned when you said that. I wasn't like, going to say anything. Yeah. Thank you, Meg. Let's check in right now at number eight. Number eight, Nikisha Sales. 
A two-time AP All-American, Sales left UConn as the school's all-time leading scorer, albeit in controversial fashion. Having ruptured her Achilles, one point shy of the school record, she was allowed an uncontested shot in the team's regular season finale at Villanova, capturing the record and headlines in the process. A two-time Big East Defensive Player of the Year, Sales also registered 447 career steals, still number one in the program's history. Nikisha was the difference between us losing in the final eight when she was a senior in high school and us winning the national championship when she was a freshman. And even though she was only a freshman, it was exactly what we needed to go undefeated in 1995 and win our first championship to be a part of the first crew to kind of start bringing it together and win championships, it means a lot. I mean, at the time, I had no idea that this program would turn into what it has, but to be a part of that top 10 list of all the great players that have come through here is awesome. And Nikesh Sales, uh, really a great athlete. That's one of the things you can say about her, and you played with her for three years. Yeah, for three years. The thing I loved about Keish I used to call her Cool Quiche back in the day, Megan Mills. will do. Uh, cool Quiche. Uh, the thing that was so impressive about her was offensively, she was a great player. She contributed offensively so much, and we all saw that. But also, she was a great defender. She's number one on the steals list for UConn. Mm -hmm. I don't know if people would get that in a trivia contest. Mm -hmm. I don't think they realized how good of a defender that Nikisha Sales was. So offensively, she was great. One of the first great athletes to come to UConn. And defensively, she was National Defensive Player of the Year, obviously. Um, so I love that she could do both ends of the court. Well, one of the things that certainly drew national attention was when she did on crutches, a point short of the all-time UConn scoring record, allowed to come out onto the court and score that bucket uncontested against Villanova, got national attention. What was your take on on that duck I'm a basketball purist I don't agree with doing it at that point just a sense of purity she had a chance injuries happen but doesn't take away anything from her unbelievable career she had I mean cares right you would win probably a, a pretty good bar bet if you said who's UConn's all-time steals leader <laughs> he might not be the people who'd be guessing right away <laughs> yeah. well you know it's funny Doug. I understand and I've certainly have heard people talk about this for so long I think it was such an emotional decision that Gino Oriema made along with his buddy Harry Peretta at Villanova to allow the shot and all that. And I certainly understand, you know, from the purist standpoint that it, that's, you don't agree. The reason I didn't have a problem with it because maybe I was too close to it at the time and the, it was such, it was so unfair and all of that kind of stuff. But if you were in the Villanova's gym the day that it happened, there was just this feeling of kind of euphoria and everyone was so happy and then and you see this kid score Villanova then goes down and score the game start, it starts 2-2 two -two. right and then the media backlash later it, it's like wait a minute you guys weren't there you didn't see what happened and I understand life's not fair but I'm still okay with what he did because of the reason that he did it so there it is Nikisha sales coming in at number eight Wow Jeez, and she's number what, seven? Mm -hmm. Holy moly. So Gino taking some exception to number seven on our list. Here's a hint as to one of these three players. We reveal who it is and why he's so surprised. Next. <laughs> number seven, Jennifer Rosati. As a junior, Rizzotti played a key role in UConn's first undefeated season and first national championship in 1995. Her senior year, she was named the program's second ever AP National Player of the Year, a Wade Trophy winner, and two-time Kodak First Team All-American. Rizzotti graduated as the school's all-time leader in steals and assists and was inducted into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame in 2013. Wow. Jeez, she was out. He was national player of the year, and we went undefeated. And she's number what, seven? Mm -hmm. Holy moly. If you had told me like 20 years ago, it would be a little bit of a big deal, but after the decades of great players that have gone through the program, it's quite the honor. Very rarely does it happen in the game of basketball that a 5-5 guard dominates the entire game. And her junior year, when we won the championship, was probably the most dominant player in college basketball, and she's 5'5". 
my experience there did more for me than maybe I did for them. Um, but it's always uh, fun to reflect on my experience and thinking about being a, a small part of the very beginning of all of the, you know, Husky madness. And, um, you know, like I said, it's an honor. So Gino felt she should have been a little bit higher on that list. You played with her. She was the point guard on that national championship team, the undefeated team. Mm. She was tough, right? She had a, a toughness about her. You wanted her in your foxhole. Yeah. I'm telling you, she's the kind of kid. <laughs> she didn't miss a game, tough as nails, just kind of like Katie Lou. She'd throw up in a trash can, keep going. I mean, she's that type of player that you just had so much trust in. She would grab me by my shirt, get in my face. Doesn't matter that she was 5'5". Five five. She just brought the team together. She really mm -hmm. did. And she was such um, an extension of the coach on the court, but she just... She had that it tough factor. So, so Gino felt she should have been higher on this list. Doug, you had her down a couple of slots. Why, why is that the case? I mean, as we said at the beginning, it's so tough to pick the top ten where to put them. To me, I mean, her greatest thing besides what you just mentioned is that Connecticut kid playing at UConn, every little girl at that time who was a guard wanted to be Jen Rizzotti in Connecticut. So, like, that to me is, is such a wonderful story and it adds to her lore, so to right. speak. And so much of this, too, is about all those intangibles. Like, how many kids wore knee pads because Jen wore <laughs> knee pads back in the day? It's true. Yeah. Yeah. High five of just pure heart and toughness and, and made the team so much tougher. And, and as good as her stats were, I mean, she, intangibles. Th those intangibles that yeah. she brought to the team in that time were incredible. When it comes to the record books at UConn, third in steals all time, third in assists. And again, big part of that first mm -hmm. national championship team as we now head on to number six. Number six, Tina Charles. By the time she left stores, Charles was the program's all time scoring and rebounding leader. The New York native led the Huskies to back-to-back -back national championships in 2009 and 2010. A Naismith Trophy and Wooden Award winner, Charles was also named the AP National Player of the Year her senior year. To be named one of the top 10 players in UConn history is just an honor. Um, you think of all the, all the greats that came along um, UConn and stepped on campus, who Coach Oyama has impacted. and just being one of the young ones, just what the older ones have done for me and my career, and not just on the women's basketball side, but also on the men's basketball side, just um, what both programs have been able to accomplish there. Um, I think it's really an honor and a blessing for me. Once it clicked, those two years, her junior and senior year, man, she scared the daylights out of everybody. I mean, there's just nobody could handle her, no matter what. No matter what they tried, nobody could handle her. Well, she's third all time in scoring at this moment on the Connecticut list and the leading rebounder in UConn history. But Meg, you had her slotted down a few. Spots. I did have her a little bit lower. And it's funny. You heard Gino just say once it clicked. Mm. Well, her freshman and sophomore year, like it was just hard for her to get into exactly what he wanted to do. She wasn't quite, I don't know if she wasn't comfortable, she wasn't buying in, whatever it was, she wasn't as dominant as she was her junior and senior year. So for that reason, not because she's not qualified, but for that reason is why I had her a little bit lower on the list than what ended up being the final list. Well, I'm a little biased because she's a post player. She was a big girl and uh, I loved her footwork. Everything, it was so great with her footwork and to play with Maya and still dominate the way she did. Um, she had a great supporting cast, but you also had people who could take more shots and take the ball, but she really was uh, one of the great true post players back to the basket can mm -hmm. make the little hook shot. I love that she was a true post player. She could go outside, but really she dominated the inside. And she, I mean, as you said, Meg, and Coach said, really improved over her career. I mean, I, from the inside, I'm sure you know he rides people pretty hard at times when they're the freshman, sophomores. From the outside, it looked like she is in the doghouse every day, freshman, <laughs> sophomore year, but then became this unbelievable player junior year, senior year that no one could stop. So to me, that was special that she really became a much better player as she got older. I'll tell you what concerns me a little bit here is that we've got five down and still no sight of... Kara Walters. That does concern me a little bit. Halfway home here on our countdown show. I don't know if there's anybody that's affected the game that we've ever had at Connecticut as much physically as Stewie has. No one. As you'd expect, very high praise from Gina Oriema when it comes to Brianna Stewart. Will her four national championships catapult her to the top of our list? Best of the best continues in just a moment.
So we're halfway home here on the best of the best UConn Women's Top 10 presented by People's United Bank. Mariah Jefferson, Carrie Bascom, Nikisha Sales, Jen Rosati, and Tina Charles rounding out the bottom five on our list. And now we present to you number five. Number five, Rebecca Lobo. Enshrined in the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame in 2017, Lobo led the Huskies to their first national championship and first undefeated season in 1995. In that season, she was the AP National Player of the Year, Naismith National Player of the Year, and NCAA Woman of the Year. Lobo was UConn's first USA Basketball gold medalist and remains one of the program's leaders in points, rebounds, and blocks. I think I'm most interested to know who would be on Coach Orama's top 10 list and the variety of top 10 lists he would have, you know, the most yelled at players in the history of the program. But that's one of the things when you look at UConn um, in the last 25 years, the names that have gone through there, the future Hall of Famers that, are, that wore the UConn jersey, the women who are still uh, breaking records and setting records, whether it's in the WNBA or for USA Basketball or their overseas teams, there's been tremendous talent that has gone through UConn. And, um, and to the program's credit, these players who've gotten there as, as great All-Americans and as le le have left as much better um, players is a testament to what the coaching staff has been able to do. For me, it was the ability for us to go from like being a regional program to being a national program and that was you know that was kind of the beginning of it all I mean you're in the Hall of Fame so that's pretty good and you're only number five <laughs> that is true uh, she was a game changer listen and, and again her speech at the Hall of Fame the Nate Smith Hall of Fame was one for the ages yeah. this past year uh, you played with her she was a big part of that 95 national championship team what do you what do you take of of her impact on the program and as Gino said right there he did change the perception of the program. Well, and it's not just the program. I think Rebecca changed women's basketball forever. Mm. And she started that snowball going down the hill, and it's gotten bigger and bigger since. And, and really, to me, when you think of Rebecca, she was Connecticut's little sweetheart. She was the face of women's basketball. And Rebecca's such a wonderful person, too. So she's a great teammate, amazing stats, but also the perfect person to be that role model for the little girls. At 95 year, you had little girls with Rebecca Lobo jerseys she just changed the whole sport forever and for that we I think everyone in women's basketball would point to that and say they're grateful by the way it is worth noting here when uh, when she spoke about the fact who's Gino is yelling at the most a carrot did raise her hand <laughs> she was she was right in the middle of that well you know what Rebecca said to me I loved when you got here because I was the worst <laughs> post player in America We're until good. you got here yep. so yeah. I was the worst you're welcome Rebecca I'm glad I could take the title <laughs> over well what we do know is you guys did something right because you won that national championship. no question yeah. about it and think about it as good as Rebecca was she knew that you were a, a critical player on that 95 <laughs> championship team. Rebecca, I mean, Carrie, you were one of the most yeah. important pieces of that puzzle. But what it has always impressed me about Rebecca um, is her humility. You even mm -hmm. heard it in her, um, her, you know, just what she said here tonight on the show. I mean, she, she was the right person at the right time. Timing is everything in life. And the media was actually ready to cover women's basketball. They saw her, they grabbed on. She transformed UConn's program. She transformed women's basketball as a whole. Mm. Yeah, she, she was the face of the sport for that time. I mean, at UConn and then after when she was done. I mean, she really was a big part of why women's basketball took off for a period because of Rebecca Lobo. And what she did on the court was unbelievable. I mean, undefeated season, AP player of the year, the first AP player of the year. She was an unbelievable player, but also, as you said, had the humility off the court that everyone could just gravitate to. I think it's interesting because there's so much more to Rebecca, and you guys were talking about that, than just the numbers and her transformation, not just at UConn, but when it comes to the game of women's basketball. And so she comes in at number five as we now check in. Here's number four. Number four, Sue Bird, a two-time national champion. Bird was named the AP and Naismith National Player of the Year in her senior season when she led the Huskies to a perfect 39-0 record. The inaugural winner of the Nancy Lieberman Award for the nation's best point guard. She won the award three straight years, and despite missing the majority of her freshman year due to injury, Bird is among UConn's all-time leaders in assists and most accurate three-point shots. 
you know, you think about all the success that UConn has had and all the great players that have played there. You know, at times I have to pinch myself that, that I am a part of that kind of a list. Um, so it's just really an honor. You know, more than anything, though, I know all of us on there who um, played at UConn, it was always about what was on the front of the jersey, not the back. So even though a list like this is, is really um, great and going to be fun to look back on, you know, it, it goes without saying that it was more about winning than anything else. You know, coming out of high school, I bet you, I don't think she thought what happened to her would happen here, but there was something about her, you know, like there's just something about her. You, even to this day, you can't put your finger on it. A great, 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 great player, one of the best players ever to play college basketball. And that isn't even close to what a great person she is. Not even close. 114 and four in her four years at Connecticut. That, that's not so bad right there. And Doug, you had her slotted in right at that spot. Number four, why is that the case? I mean, she was the first point guard I remember who could make people better. I mean, Rosati was great with her fire and such, her toughness, but Sue was the consummate point guard. Get the ball to the person where they can score. And she was incredible in, at UConn winning championships, making players better. That to me is what makes her the fourth best player. And, and how much of what she did is even more impressive when you figure in the fact that she missed most of her freshman year with a pretty significant injury. Yeah, she blew out her knee. She only played eight games her freshman year, um, which is remarkable to know what her numbers are. In spite of all that, she had a pretty good supporting cast, no doubt. But to me, you know, her decision making, Doug, like you said, making people better. She still, though, has the best pull-up jumper on the move than anyone I've seen. I think she just epitomizes unselfish basketball. I mean, like Doug said, she does. She looks to pass before scoring. She has the capability of scoring, but her first look would be to pass the rock and get her teammates open. But just that unselfish, you can tell. I mean, do, do you hear there's a trend with UConn mm -hmm. players? Mm -hmm. They're very humble. They're gracious. They and, and that's not by accident. Gino recruits a certain type of person because he knows that person will be unselfish and figure out Megan knows this, their freshman year, they step on campus, it's not all about you. Mm -hmm. And they have to figure that out real quick. And let me tell you, Sue knows that. And she shared the basketball with everybody. And she I just, she's such a great person. Certainly worth noting here, she won championships at UConn, WNBA, and then Olympic gold, four Olympic yeah. golds. Something you did as well. You won in all three phases, which only a handful of people have done in the history of the women's game. Two-time player of the year and UConn's all-time leading scorer, Maya Moore. She's now in the top three. We can guarantee that. But where does she fit in here? Best of the best. UConn women's top ten presented by People's United Bank continues from New York City in just a moment. Number three, Maya Moore, UConn's all-time leading scorer. Moore only lost four games in her four years at UConn. A two-time national champion, she was also a two-time winner of the AP Player of the Year Award and the Naismith Trophy, an AP First Team All-American every year at UConn. Moore recorded 50 double-doubles with the Huskies and is among the program's best in rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks. To know the caliber of players that have come through uh, that program and to, to be able to accomplish a lot of my dreams and goals while I was there and to really feel like I reached my potential and, and squeezed out every bit that I could for my four years there uh, makes me really proud no matter you know where I rank but to know that I, I was able to leave a legacy there for the future players to, to look up to and to um, you know to work for is, is really satisfying. There has never ever been a kid come to the University of Connecticut that the minute they stepped on campus to the minute they left, played harder, competed harder, did more things than Maya Moore. And I don't care who they are. There hasn't been one, and I doubt there'll ever be one. Just to really put into perspective how impressive this list is, she's the leading scorer in the history of UConn. She comes in at number three, and the head coach right there, very heady praise 
for Maya Moore. Yeah, I mean, Maya Moore is just so athletic. She's athletic, and I think the thing about Maya, she got better as far as she thought she had to do everything. She came from high school where she was it. Clearly, she fills a stat sheet, but she had to learn to involve everybody around her. She had to realize that she had a great supporting cast, so let's kind of use everyone. I think that's the one place where Gino could see growth in her because, like he said, stepping on campus, she was there was never a doubt she was going to be consistent as far as her effort, but once she figured out how to include the whole team because she had a great supporting cast forget it unstoppable yeah I, you know it's this is where it gets really tricky like how can you really discern between the top three and, and with all that Maya did and accomplished to have her at three you know to me it's like splitting hairs you know she was at four final fours she won two national championships so to me that's perhaps why I don't think Only she should two. be higher. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, but but again, it's uh, it's 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 crazy. This is how hard this list is. It, it, it is a hard list. And what's interesting, we've talked about some of the way some of these women have impacted not just UConn, but but the women's game. And it was sort of a bitter recruiting battle between UConn and Tennessee for Maya Moore. It, it was, and she chose UConn, and, and obviously it was the right choice for her. And, and Maggie, right, we're splitting hairs here. I mean. Two championships is not good enough to get you one or two. <laughs> and, and that's, I mean, unbelievable. Her career was off the charts at UConn, mm -hmm. but there were two players better than her because of other reasons. So, right. I mean, that, that's, we're splitting hairs now. Two national championships is not good enough to win <laughs> you the, the best player at a school. Yeah. So, down to the final two here, and let's check in as to who comes in at number two. Number two, Brianna Stewart. A national champion every year at UConn, Stewie is the only player in NCAA history to be named the Final Four's most outstanding player four times. A three-time AP Player of the Year and three-time Naismith Trophy winner, she won 151 games during her storied career. A top shot blocker and rebounder, she finished her career as the school's second all-time leading scorer. I don't know if there's anybody that's affected the game that we've ever had at Connecticut as much physically as Stewie has. No one. No one. You've seen all the players and all the, everything that UConn has done uh, since they've started um, until now and as far as accolades, championships, whatever, player of the years. Uh, it's, it's a huge honor because you think of the people that you're you're in that group with, you're in that top 10 with, and uh, I'm sure there's like 10 or 15 other players who also deserve to be in that top 10. Even to this day, you talk to the people in the WNBA, there's nobody like Stewie. She came to campus, said she was going to win four national championships, and she backed it up. She won those four national championships. And, you know, talking during that vignette, you all think she slots in at the right place here at number two. I did vote her number one because she walked the walk and she put the talk out there and she delivered those four national championships, most outstanding player at the Final Four, four times. What's your reasoning at number two, Meg? Uh, well, because when you see who number one is and what I say then, that will be very clear. But, uh, you know, Gino said it well. Like, you know, there's no one who could impact a game like Brianna Stewart. I mean, scoring, rebounding blocks. You know, she shot 53% from the floor. 36% from three-point range. She could score inside, she could score outside, and she wasn't as comfortable inside the lane. Mm. Uh, she liked to sort of hover around on the outside, but she, he, you know, as is the case here, he makes players better, and, and he challenged her to expand her game, and she became unstoppable mm. on, on inside and outside, and then defensively, she was a force as well. Yep. Well, I just think, because of her size and the skill set, the mismatches that evolved there. Her freshman year, you know, she took it from Gino, just like every other freshman, but she learned real use that skill set and her size to her advantage offensively and defensively and you look and it's not just points like we said over 300 assists so here you have a person who can score and pass the ball and block shots we haven't had anybody like Stewie in the back line for a while now we have Azure Stevens which is a good thing but the way that her teammates could trust that she'd be there uh, she just has a whole skill set and size about her that's unmatched I've always compared her to one of the great NBA players with with the way she did so many things so well and that's Larry Bird Mm -hmm. She saw the floor well. She could play inside, outside. She, to me, was the consummate all-around 
player, Doug. Mm -hmm. She was. I mean, there is no question if this list was the most outstanding player, she would win it by far. I mean, she four MVPs of the Final Four, four most outstanding players of the Final Four, four national championships. But she had a little bit of help to do those. I mean, number 10 on the list played with her for all four of those years, Mariah Jefferson. So not taking anything away from Stewie, we said two national championships gets you a third on the list, <laughs> four <laughs> national championships gets you number two on the list. So, it is amazing. Yeah, but she, I mean, she was unbelievable career. And I don't think we're ever see a player like her again. Mm -hmm. Just her skill set, as you said, six foot four and can handle the ball and do things that some guards can't even do. So she's one of a kind player in UConn history, and I think probably in women's basketball history. As we head for break here, we get a look at numbers four, three, and two on our list. At this point, probably have a pretty good idea who's coming in at number one. Kara, I'm sorry. I don't think we're going in your direction. No. But on the other side of a break, we'll reveal the top of our list back in a moment. Best of the best. UConn Women's Top 10 is presented by People's United Bank. See what know how can do for you. We are back on the best of the best. UConn Women's Top 10. Here is our list up to this moment. All we're missing at this point is number one on our prestigious list. And here is the player voted number one by our Blue Ribbon panel. Number one, Diana Taurasi. Tarasi's name is all over the UConn record books. The first player in Huskies history to amass 2,000 points, 600 assists, and 600 rebounds. Tarasi won the Naismith Trophy twice and was the AP Player of the Year her junior season. A two-time Lieberman Award winner and the winner of three consecutive national titles. She is one of a select few to win an NCAA championship, a WNBA championship, and an Olympic gold medal. It's the biggest honor to play at, at Connecticut. That's just the bottom line. I remember the first time I saw them play on TV, um, there was something special, and that was the early years, you know, with Rebecca and Jen and Jamel. Um, just the aura that they had already, um, and the crowd, and the sense of community and, and wanting that team to do so well, um, you knew there was something special there. Can't describe it. There's just something you're born with. And she was born with it, you know. Um, she was just born with what it takes to be that fearless kind of person that you would want on your team as a teammate because you knew as long as she was on your team, you were going to win. It was special. And then you meet Coach Ariema, and you know why um, this program is where it is now. Um, there's just nothing like it in, in any college sport or even any professional sport, really. There's uh, a fine line of how great, um, you know, Coach has made the program. The greatest teammate, I mean, maybe ever. But I mean, the biggest pain in the ass, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, there's a fine line between you know, genius and insanity. You know, they talk about that all the time. Yeah, she's on that fine line. On a fine line, but uh, no questioning just how great a player she was at Connecticut. The three national championships. Didn't win it her freshman year, but there were injuries, and mm -hmm. she didn't have a great game against Notre Dame, right, in the national semifinal? No, she would tell you she yeah. stunk. <laughs> she, she's struggling. She, but you have her at number one, and you think she, she belongs She is there. by far... Uh, the the greatest, uh, you know, Gino's talked about it, and when do you ever see him heap praise like that? But it's so well deserved. The greatest teammate. There's no player that I've ever seen come through this program, or maybe ever, who did more to make their teammates better. Mm. Diana was the best at making sure every one of her teammates were in the right mental space, had what they needed, didn't worry about herself. She took care of everybody else. And by doing so, she she won some championships, both her junior and senior year, that they never should have won, but they won because of her. Yeah, I mean, she was the only All-American on those teams in the, in the late, later years. So she's one of those players that's amazing, but didn't have a supporting cast in mm. the last couple of years like some of these other players. And she had that it factor, like Gino said. I mean, you know, Meg, Diana would kick her own mother in the face to get the ball if it <laughs> winning a national championship. I mean, that's just the type of kid she is. You know, you want her on your team. She gets it. And Diana Taurasi and not having the supporting cast all four years makes it even more impressive that she was able to win national championships. Yeah, I mean, the supporting cast she didn't have, the swagger she does have, mm -hmm. and then, again, splitting hairs. To me, what put her number one on my list, 
Game's in the line, your tie game down one. Who do you want shooting that basketball? And out of all the great UConn players, Diane Taurasi is the one I would want every over time. anybody else mm -hmm. to shoot every time. Yeah. She, she had a, a toughness, did she not? That You oh. talked about Jim Rosati earlier on in our show, but she did have this unique toughness. Unlike anything I've ever seen. Mm. <laughs> and you loved how she, <laughs> she was cocky, but in a nice way. She was confident, let's give her that. Well, when she ever held up the Yukon jersey to the fans, it was well, like- Well, how about Gino she, saying, we have Diana and you, you don't. don't. I mean, <laughs> what more do that you That explains need? it right there, right? <laughs> so there she is coming in at number one. So, you know, this was a very difficult list to put together and there are names that are not on here that probably do deserve in many ways to be on here. We talk about a Schwinn Cash and mm -hmm. you, Kara, and I'm going to say right here, you got to vote for me because, uh, you, yes, <laughs> eighth all-time leading scorer, uh, the gold medal, the national championship, the WNBA championship, and again, not many have done that. And you had such a big part in that 95 championship team. Uh, Svetlana does not appear on the top 10. Asia Jones, also honorable mention. Yeah. What do you what do you make of at least three of those? And what yourself, it's tough to it's really just, judge that. Well, I'm not going to talk about myself. Clearly, we have this picture. That's sad. I'm in black and white and everyone else is <laughs> in color. That ago shows was. you how old I am right there. Um, you know, I, I mean, I was fortunate to play with some fantastic players and then go on in my career. But that's, you know, we're talking about UConn here. Um, but Meg gave me the great compliment of, you know, we wouldn't have won the national championship without me being involved with that. But I, I, I'm not. That's true. I mean, know. on that uh, that year, I remember being on that staff that it was so important um, for you at six seven. And and we, you know, there was Rebecca, there was Jen, there was Nikisha, there was Jamel, there was Carla Barubi, a, a good, really really good team. But you were so different, and you were so skilled, and your hands were terrific. Your footwork was always great. So. They knew to get the big girl the ball down low, and you blew it up in, uh, against Stanford in the Final Four when no one expected us to do yeah. anything. You had 31 yeah. as we blew out Stanford and then came back and beat Tennessee for the final. But that was – but I have to say, I, and in all honesty, the only reason I didn't have you on my list yeah. was because, again, it's embar an embarrassment of riches for all of these players. And there were so many other guards and players that – I mean, they had the ball and uh, you know later in your career yeah. it was a little bit more difficult to get you the ball and so you didn't have quite the domination yeah. uh, because you couldn't get the ball yeah guards control the game like yeah. we're at the mercy of our guards but right. I appreciate that I wouldn't put me on the top 10 list um, so I'm not offended whatsoever but even to be mentioned in the same breath on the mm -hmm. bubble whatever uh, amazing and then you have like Swin Cash Tamika Williams mm -hmm. Renee Montgomery I mean there's so we could go on and on we could have a top 100 show and still sure. you know not fill it so um, it's an honor, obviously, to be involved with the program, and I'm, I'm grateful to still be involved with you doing broadcasting. And, and, and listen, this is a one-of-a-kind program. Kalina Mosqueda-Lewis, a fourth oh, all-time leading yeah. scorer in the history of the program. I thought she should get some consideration here, Doug. Yeah, she was an unbelievable scorer. And if you look, if you take the next five players on this list that we don't have as the top ten, that's a pretty good team you'd have. They'll probably <laughs> right. win some national yeah. titles. Well, and think about it. Like Svetlana Brasimova, we right. really haven't talked yeah. a lot about her. I voted her on, on my list yep. because – she she came from Russia and she did things and, and played and the fluidity and the beautiful way in which she played the game and the way she could score was different than anything we had seen. And she was, you know, she was an incredible college player and then got hurt her senior year when Shea Ralph also hurt her knee that year. And that really derailed things uh, for what was maybe the best starting five in the history of college basketball. Uh, you know, I think it's worth noting and we haven't we haven't mentioned it yet, but your your impact, you were there. <laughs> Yeah, early on. And yeah. then as an assistant, they don't even have pictures. An assistant then. coach as well. But <laughs> you're modest, but you've had an impact on that program. You, you, you all have. You certainly have. You certainly have. It's fun. And, you know, right? it's a great. And some of the girls even mentioned. I think Sue. You know, Diana. It's a wonderful program to be a part of. But what's cool for me is when I went there back in 1988. People, when I told people I was going to Yukon, they thought I was going to Alaska. Yeah. And so things have changed in the last 30 years. Uh, and the fact that we're now sitting here talking about a top 10, when back then people didn't even know that they played uh, women's basketball in college. So we've come a long way, and it's been an honor and a joy to be on the ride. And let me say, it's been a great hour to be with to, uh, all of you uh, discussing one of the, the great programs in all of sports in, in America. And let's not forget this, the guy leading the way, 
the head coach, the Hall of Famer, Gino Oriyama, he has been at the heart mm. of all of it. And so that's going to do it for the best of the best. UConn Women's Top 10 presented by People's United Bank. And so for Kara Walters and for Meg Colno and for Doug Feinberg, I'm Gary Apple. We thank you for joining us here and we say so long from New York City.